Hello! Today I'd like to show you how to do some foundation piecing. We're going to do a heart today and I have shown you some basics of foundation piecing before in quilting tips and techniques video number 030 and today it's, we're just going to take it a little bit further. It's just a little bit more of a complicated block but still a relatively simple one. It's still done in one whole block. Later on we can show you how to do things in different segments where things get more complicated. But I thought this would be quite fun to do a heart and I've used, uh, well obviously in this nice soft grey one, I've used three shades of grey plus I've used this little stripe in here, so a fourth colour here and then a background as well. And I've worked it out that um, just by cutting some strips for my fabrics, one and a half inch strips, two and a half inch strips and a three and a half inch strips for the background, that kind of allows you to then cut into some shorter lengths to use um, for the pieces so that there's as, as little waste as you can reasonably get plus it's a little bit easier. So this is going to be a free downloadable pattern. This is available on my website on gourmetquilter.com. You can download the pattern and on the pattern will be the foundation pattern plus the information that you need for cutting your strips so you can make a heart block. So I'm going to get started now. Now I've cut out the fabrics already into the lengths that I'm recommending or suggesting as a good idea. I've got all my background pieces, my three shades of red and my darker piece that's going to be my triangles in here. And I've actually placed this little kit here ready for me to sew. So all these little bits here are nice but not necessary just at the moment. I've got my little glue stick just to get me started with my piece number one. So we're going to put everything on the pattern in the, in the order of the numbers. So we're going to start with number one and then we're going to put on number two and then number three, etc. So that you just continue on adding things in the order of the numbers. So I'm going to start initially by placing my piece number one. Now remember we're working on the back side of the pattern and I'm going to put just the very lightest dab of glue on that. I don't want it to be stuck fast, but I just want it to hold in place while I get going. So I'm position that there. Now I've got to make sure now that that's covering the area that I want to cover. Hoping you'll be able to see all this. Um, and I just want to be able to have my bit below the line that I'm going to sew on, ultimately, which I'll use this one as a guide, even though I'll be sewing these angles first. So I want that to sit approximately a quarter of an inch down because that's going to help me position other things later on. So it's a little bit big but that's okay, we can trim that off afterwards. And then I need to find my piece two. Now remember we're going to put these fabrics right sides together because we're going to be flipping it down afterwards. So now I want that to be covering that seam which is along this line here so I want it to stick past about that quarter of an inch or so and now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch on that line between the A1 and the A2. Now remember to have your stitch length just slightly reduced from if your stitch length is normally 2.5 which mine is I've taken it down to 1.5 so a smaller stitch than usual and this helps perforate the paper. I'm working on paper today there's other things you can use this is just regular paper from my printer. I'm just going to stitch along that line, starting quarter of an inch before I needed to, as far as the pattern goes, and a bit about quarter of an inch past the next point. And that just allows my seams to go in and be fully covered. And so now I want to just trim away that bit that's behind there. So I'm just going to fold that along the seam line. I've obviously got just a little bit less than a quarter of an inch there, but I think it's going to be fine. And I'm just going to trim off that piece that I don't need. And I'm going to get the iron. And I'm going to, if you iron as you go, it just helps enormously on how things sit. They just go together much better. So probably don't really want too much steam with that paper. So now I'm ready to position my next piece. Again, right sides together and I'll take it to my light source and have a look at where that's sitting. I want that to be covered, covering all areas. And you can see, I think, that there's um, approximately a quarter of an inch beyond that line there. 
Now back to the sewing machine and stitch along that line. So this takes a little bit of time to do, um, but you'll end up with a really nice shape at the end of it. It's all nicely sewn. It would be much harder because these are these lines are all at funny angles, so these would be quite hard to achieve just with regular piecing. So now I want to trim that back. So I'm just going to pull that little bit of stitching from the paper there, fold it along the line, bring my ruler over and just trim a quarter of an inch from my stitching line. And then back to the iron again and iron that piece down. And now I'm ready to put on, so I've got this piece and this piece on, I'm now ready to put on one of these triangles. So because I've made my little kit up ready, everything's in order, and so I'm going to put it, remember, right sides together, take it to the light source, and it's a little bit harder to see with these stronger colours, but it's not too bad. And you can just make it line up about a quarter of an inch. This is the line we're going to be sewing. We want it roughly a quarter of an inch down beyond that. And you need to make sure that this piece is going to be big enough when it flips down to cover that whole triangle, which I've already checked. So I'm now going to cut, sew along that line. And start a quarter of an inch beyond in the next shape and then stitch right along that straight bit. Quarter of an inch beyond at this end as well. And now I just want to flip that back because I want to trim that seam. And I want to take that to the iron and I want to press that down. So you can see already you're getting lovely little matching centers and all sorts of things going on there. So we'll just continue on in this same way. Adding the next piece. And even though these fabrics are quite dark, with a good light behind, you can see quite well. Now you've got to make sure that you're coming beyond this end and beyond this end and beyond the seam line. So there's a few little things to look out for. And then Back to the sewing machine again. Don't forget to do the quarter of an inch beyond the area each time. This just allows everything to tuck nicely inside the seam allowance. Now we just want to pull away any stitching that's on the paper there so that we can fold that back. So it looks a little bit fiddly, but if you just take your time, it's not too bad at all. Back to the iron. And the other side. So I think you're probably getting the hang of this now. We'll just keep going so that you can see the heart at the end. Again, make sure that everything's extending beyond this end, this end, and this seam line here, and I can just see that. So foundation piecing is such a good idea when you're after specific um, odd angle shapes because it's um, much easier to get those accurate by sewing them onto a foundation than it is just by joining everything. Okay, we're just going to trim this seam bit now. So you can see I'm not really wasting a lot. These little bits that are coming off are not uh, huge or anything. By cutting my little pieces into in my strips into little pieces before I start. Now we're ready again to do another triangle in there. So I've got to lay this on. 
I can get a rough idea where I'm going to put that because it's going to be a quarter of an inch beyond that point. So I can pretty much position it and then take it to the light and just double check that I've got that about right. And I'm not sure if you can see this, but I can see it. It's sitting quarter of an inch below my line there and it's beyond at both ends. So I'm going to sew that on. And a quarter of an inch at each end beyond the line that you're sewing. And trimming as you go, pressing as you go, lots of things as you go. It's so exciting to see it all coming up. Okay, one more round to go, and then the background. So again, these bits here just need to be quarter of an inch beyond, approximately quarter of an inch beyond, and you need to make sure that everything extends beyond at each end of the line as well as beyond the line. exciting watching all these patterns appearing. away from your sewing and back to the iron and one more point to go on and then the backgrounds so just lay that on where you think it might go because it just helps you get it positioned take it up to the light and yes that seems to be sitting pretty well So this is a pattern that I've just designed on my um, quilt software program that I use. And it's wonderful how it prints it out for you with all the numbers and everything on it. And an extra seam allowance around the outside edge for you to trim the block afterwards. I'm going to trim this seam. a lot of the trauma out of these things. We don't want to be traumatised by her sewing. Okay, press that down. And this is looking good. If you can see that. All my points are sitting really nicely. These angles are funny little angles. So that's why we're foundation piecing because it's odd little angles that would be very hard to achieve accurately. Um, you may not want everything accurate of course. Um, but if you do want it accurate, this is a way to achieve it. So now I'm going to position, I've done all these pieces up to number 10 now, and now I'm going up to do the two corners, 11 and 12, and then we'll do the two bigger corners. So we're coming up here, so again, right sides together, and take it back to the light source, and line that up. Make sure that you're going right out into the seam allowance area with your piece of material, Make sure it's big enough so that when you flip it over, it covers out. This is plenty big enough. And then 
back to the sewing machine. And again, your quarter inch beyond here. And then when you get to the other end, because you're out of the on the outside edge, go right out beyond the seam allowance on the pattern. little seam so that you can trim that back. Oh, this is looking good. And now for the other side, same thing. It's quite handy if you've got a light box or some sort of light source. And this little sewing lamp that I've got here is amazingly useful at times like this that it's just there so make sure that the fabric extends out beyond the seam allowance at both ends as well as beyond the line you're sewing and remember to start right out beyond that seam allowance area and quarter of an inch past the next line off those seams there so that you can fold that back and trim. And back to the iron. Two more bits to go and then just trim the block down and it's looking good. Okay. So there's actually 14 pieces in this block. Um, as they're all numbered, it's easy to see where you're going. Now I'm going to come, this one has to extend right up to the, past the seam allowance up here and down to the point down here. Or down beyond your point down there, I should say. You can see that, that's going to be good. So starting just your quarter inch beyond that line here and then when you get to the other end go right out past the seam allowance area. away from your sewing and back to the iron We're so nearly there one more piece to go now these bits may seem like they're quite large and we are going to have to trim a bit off but we need to make sure that we've got enough fabric to get past our point when we've flipped it back like that so you don't want to be running short at that stage now, for the last piece, you need to make sure that it's right out beyond the seam allowances at both ends. This is slightly longer than the previous piece. All that information will be on the pattern if you download it from my site. Okay, so starting way out beyond the seam allowance, just imagine this line continuing on, and then all the way down past the seam allowance at the other end. trimmed and you can see what it looks like. So just pop this bit, fold it back, trim that seam allowance, quarter of an inch away from your sewing and press it. And we have a heart surrounded by a very, very lot of odd shapes, but it's looking good. Now I'm just going to trim that block. As I mentioned, there's a seam allowance marked on the pattern. So you don't need to particularly line up with the board or anything, but you can just line your ruler up with that line and just trim along the dotted line of the pattern. And go around all four sides. And 
this block measures four, um, four and a half inches across by six and a half inches long. So finished, it's going to be four inches by six inches. And so that's the block. And so with the grey one that I've already done, you can see it's actually got a border on. I just cut some one and a half inch strips and put them on. Now because we've done this funny cutting and things, we haven't got um, a straight grain on the edge of our block. So to, if you're going to pop a, some strips around or do something like I've done here, you can leave the paper in till you've done that because that will still hold it nice and secure for you um, on that edge and just so on the line because these bits being a little bit on the cross are a little bit stretchy so just be a little bit careful if you take the paper off you'll just have to be careful you don't stretch those edges when you're sewing them to whatever it is that you're going to sew them to but this one here you can see I've actually left the paper on when I've sewn my strips around for the border and then I can take the papers out of that now and uh, the paper is very easy to remove because we've used a smaller stitch than normal that will be quite perforated and that will just tear away quite easily um, so, and if you're having trouble with tearing it away um, in some of the points and things, just get a little spritzer bottle water uh, with a water spray in it. And if you just spray it just very lightly, it'll just dampen the paper and it softens in it. And you can then um, get it away very easily. So there's my heart. If you'd like to have the pattern for that, as I said, it's available as a free download on my website, gourmetquarter.com. And that's about it. Thank you.